Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. Today, I'm taking a look at a Crossfire Mark I. And I think this is actually a pretty good representation of uh, the Crossfire in general. Uh, one round went fine, one round was a little sticky, and one round just was no go. So, <laughs> this thing kind of is an amalgamation of a whole bunch of bad ideas all at the same time. Specifically, it is a combination gun, so it's a 12-gauge shotgun barrel over a 5.56 rifle barrel. And the idea was that this is supposed to give you the effectiveness of carrying both an AR-15 and a pump shotgun at the same time, I suppose, but that's not at all the way it actually works. Uh, it is pump action, and we have a selector switch right here which allows you to select either shotgun or rifle, uh, but it, they're both pump action. So you've got any size AR mags you want, but it's all pump action shooting. It has a very long length of pull. The shotgun magazine is actually located here in the back. Let's see if I can pop that out with one hand. That's the shotgun magazine. It holds four rounds and extras are basically unobtainium. They did list them in their catalog when these were for sale, but I don't think many people bought them. There we go. These were actually introduced at the 1989 SHOT Show, and in their original form, I don't know if any of these were actually produced, but the original concept was a 308 caliber rifle over a, or under a 12-gauge shotgun, and it was actually semi-automatic or pump action. You could choose. And you can see the original picture there. It actually is kind of a slick-looking gun. Um, a number of people put in orders at that SHOT Show, but the gun never apparently materialized. When it did finally come to market, it wasn't until uh, 1998, and I think the first ones actually showed up for sale in early 99. They were only manufactured until 2001 for reasons that may already be obvious and probably will become clear if they aren't yet. Uh, you could get them either black or camo, and they are now 223 under 12 gauge with AR magazines and only pump action. Now, when these came to market, of course, this was during the assault weapons ban, which ran from 1994 to 2004 in the US, and it put some restrictions on features of semi-automatic rifles. Well, as a pump action, this, was, uh, this, this wasn't subject to any of those restrictions. So you could have high capacity mags. What's kind of funny is they didn't put in any of the other features that would have been allowed. They have a, a thumb hole stock here instead of just a pistol grip. Uh, they don't have a bayonet lug, they don't have a grenade launcher, they don't have a folding stock, they don't have anything else, which they could have, which is a little odd. Um, MSRP on these, I believe, was $18.95, which is an insanely high price for this thing. Um, let me put a few rounds through the AR side, just so you get a feel for that, and the incredibly long length of pull. So, in order to switch from shotgun to rifle, I have to close the action, I have to make sure that the hammer is cocked and the gun is locked in place. And then I push this button down and I slide it to rifle. I do want to point out, if you put it on safe, that's fine, it is safe, but under no circumstances should you release the action and try to cycle it or you will just hopelessly jam the gun out. So I'm on rifle. Now, a lot of people put vertical front grips on here to, to help cycling, which makes sense once you've played with it because this thing has a really long length of pull, and you have to be pretty brisk and firm to get it to run properly. So, uh, now one other thing, because it's locked in place, I have to have some sort of slide release in order to open it. And if you take a look up here at the muzzle, we actually have two little spring latches. When you fire, this actually re relies on the recoil from firing to pop those forward, which releases the slide backward like that. So if you haven't fired, you have to do that manually. Push those forward to release the slide. Then I can open it and chamber around. And then we have a horribly long and, and just icky trigger. Yep. There we go. really obnoxious to shoot, to be totally honest. Um, 
you have to put a lot of force into cycling it forward. And I'm not, you know, I'm not like the world's smallest person, but I really have to get to the full length of my reach to, to run this thing forward effectively. Um, now it does appear to use an AR style rotating bolt. So they were able to reuse some existing parts that were on the market. Uh, I'm sure this is a repurposed AR barrel. Um, disassembly. We're not gonna do disassembly because the manual actually specifically states that users should not attempt to disassemble it. Uh, instead, if it needs cleaning or maintenance that you can't just do by having the bolt open, you should actually send it back to Crossfire and for a small charge, they will take care of it for you. Well, they can't because they're out of business, but uh, that's really, I mean, if you see that printed in the manual, which it's there in big black and white letters, that should be a warning sign that something's wrong. <laughs> I don't want a gun where I'm not actually allowed or capable of taking the thing apart. Now, to switch back to shotgun, I'm gonna lock it, switch the selector to shotgun. Now it is empty, so I have a release latch here in the buttstock. I'm gonna pull that down. Maybe. I'll do the stupid thing here and rest it on my foot. There we go. Pull that down, then this tube comes out, and we'll go ahead and load this thing up. This will hold four rounds and you just push them in. Whoop, not a little farther than that. When you push them in, the rim is actually held in place by this little latch. So that's one, two. This does also serve as your cheek rest, which is why it's coated in a, a rubber thing. There we go, four rounds, full capacity. Then we're going to put it here, slide it in, and get it under this catch. Come on. There we go. Now, when I cycle the bolt, you will see a shotgun round. There we go, release the bolt. Now you can see a shotgun shell pops forward right there into the action and is lifted up and chambered. Now, I just wanna demonstrate this. I'm not like trying to Costa this thing, but I have to have my hand this far out almost no bend in my elbow in order to push this slide all the way to its forward position. It's really, really uncomfortable. I don't know if I mentioned that yet. Um, and despite all of that length, we actually have a 19 inch shotgun barrel and a 16 and a half inch rifle barrel, just barely over the legal minimum because they have to have the actions staggered and uh, ew, basically just ew. Uh, these things are still floating around on the market. Uh, you can find them if you really want one. I'd be on, I'll be honest, I would buy one of these just for the novelty if it were like 300 bucks, but they tend to go for quite a lot more than that. So uh, I guess I should say a definite thank you to the friend of the show who loaned this to me uh, so that I didn't have to go out and buy my own in order to do some video on it and bring it to you guys. And I don't know that there's a whole lot more to say about this. If you think that a combination over under repeating rifle shotgun is a good idea, I think I would say you're probably wrong. Those guns have their place, but not in this form. If you think that a pump action AR-15 MagFed 223 is a good idea, I would say barring some sort of weird exigent legal circumstance, you are also wrong. And uh, There we go. Okay, now it's in battery. So now I can do that slick thing I was planning to do where I switch to rifle and finish off the video by firing a few more rounds out of this thing if I can make it work.
All right, I'm done. That's it. Thanks for watching, guys.